church online. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna have so much fun this morning celebrating the birth of our Savior. Come on, let's sing it together. Love is broken 
dawn of salvation. Darkness reigns no more, for Jesus is greater. Church, what's up? My name is Todd Mullins. I'm the Inner City Ministry Director here at the Point Church, and it's just so nice to have you here with us today. And hey, if you're here for the first time, we have a challenge for you. It's very simple. We say check us out three times, pray and listen, and see if this is where God is asking you to grow spiritually. And we have greeters online right now. They just want to welcome you. So just reach out and say, hey, first time, second time, how you doing? Let them greet you and do their job. Uh, but we would love to have you here and just to know that that uh, you're searching for a church home and finding that is an important step. And you keep track of it on your communication card, which you can find it at the pointchurch.net slash connect. You can fill that out. And also on that spot for everybody, there's a spot for prayers and praises. And we're a church that believes in the power of prayer and we pray over those every single week. So let us get a chance to get to know you and pray for you, pray with you, and uh, just uh, fill that out and give that to us. And also we have Christmas Eve coming up. Today's the 19th. We got what? Five days till Christmas Eve. We got six days till Christmas. What a fun time that is. You know, every month we do a focus on the Ford, and this month we're doing focus on the Ford is to invite somebody to church. And if you're local and you want to come check us out for Christmas Eve, we've got seven services, two on Thursday, five on Friday. There's a little QR code right about there that you can scan to get yourself a free ticket. And the only reason for the ticket is just so that we know how to prepare for those services. There's no cost to you. Just come on in, check us out. And globally, if you would like, you can invite somebody into your home, Give them a meal, give them a snack, give them some coffee, tea, whatever that would be. Invite them into your home for Christmas Eve service on that day on Christmas Eve. So come check us out if you're local. If not, invite somebody into your house. Hey, have a great time. I'm going to pray and we'll get it right on with it. Hey, Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for this season. Oftentimes we overlook it. We get caught up in the, in the presence and the buying and the stress and the anxiety. But Father, may we stop. May we take a breath and just say thank you. Thank you for you and for who you are. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. What is the most powerful word ever spoken? And if you had to pick just one, one word in any language at any time for any generation, what would you pick as the most powerful word? Now, I know the obvious answer is Jesus, right? You know, Jesus is God. It's kind of like that pastor who walked into one of the Sunday school classes at his church and asked her classroom of third graders, hey, kids, you know, what has long ears and a, and a fluffy white tail? And not a single kid responded. And finally, one brave boy raised his hand and said, Pastor, I know the answer is Jesus, but it sure sounds like a bunny rabbit to me. <laughs> and of course, Jesus is the most powerful word. But beyond his name, if you had a choice of any other word, what would you say is the most powerful word? And what would it be? Is it forgiveness? Is it acceptance? Or perhaps something more practical, like if you're broke, maybe it's wealth. Or if you're sick, maybe it's health. Or if you're depressed, maybe it's joy. Or if you're uh, oppressed, maybe it's freedom or justice. You know, these are all very, very powerful words in those contexts. But the most powerful word, I think it's simpler than that. In fact, I propose that the most powerful word is a mere preposition. 
You remember learning about prepositions in grade school? You know, in, on, around, under, above, you know, with. Uh, prepositions, they're kind of like minor league words. They're not very powerful words, right? For sure. But, but if you study what God says from the first page of the Bible to the last page of the Bible, I believe that you would find the most powerful word is indeed one of those minor league prepositions. Like consider the Old Testament. To, you understand the Old Testament, right? You, you peer through the lens of God's promises. God makes and he fulfills promises or, or covenants to each person in the Old Testament that he interacts with. And once you study all those promises, you find that they're really one promise. Right, for example, the Old Testament promises start with Eve, right? After she sins, God promises her. This is Genesis 3.15. He says, one of her descendants is going to crush the serpent's head. That's the first promise. And then to Noah, he says, and this is Genesis 8.21, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, I will never again. That's the promise. I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. To Abraham, he says, and this is Genesis 12.2, I will make you into a great nation. To Moses, this is Exodus 6.6, 6, he says, I'll rescue you and set you free from your slavery. I will save you. To Deborah, he promises justice. To Ruth, redemption. To Esther, salvation. To David, God promises says, this is 2 Samuel 7, 9. He says, I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish the throne of your kingdom forever. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever. You know, which brings us to God's promise to King Ahaz. Do you know who King Ahaz is? Probably not. Why? Because King Ahaz, he was an evil dude. Like when King Ahaz took over from Hezekiah, the first thing that he does is he sets up an idol in the heart of the Jewish temple and he encourages his nation to sin. Now, King Ahaz, he's a disaster. And yet, King Ahaz is the one that God makes the ultimate promise to. He's the one that proves what the most powerful word is. See, at a very vulnerable time in the history of his nation, with enemies at the gates, King Ahaz creates division among his allies, and he threatens to join up with the enemy, the Assyrians, against his friends. And it is at this point that God sends Isaiah to King Ahaz. And when Ahaz sees Isaiah, he says, you're here to pronounce judgment on me and to put me to death. And Isaiah says, no, 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 not so. I'm here to deliver God's promise to you. I'm here to tell you that God is not done with you. Here's the promise that God makes to Ahaz. You'll find it in Isaiah 7:10. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord, your God, for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. In other words, ask God, Ahaz, for whatever you want. Anything you ask God, he's going to do to prove to you that he still wants you. But Ahaz, what does he say? He says, I will not ask. Ahaz is thinking, this is a trap. I know the evil I've done. There, there's no way that God is still for me. There's no way God is offering me some kind of olive branch. I mean, this is a trap. I don't trust God. And then Isaiah said, Here now, you house of David. He doesn't say, Here now, King Ahaz. He says, Here now, you house of David, of which I've made a promise, which I've said I'll be on your side. You will never fail. You'll never end. You'll never stop. God is not speaking to one king. He's speaking to his own character, his own promises about who he is. God says, Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of God also? Look, friends, you want to get God mad when he tells you you're not done? You're still redeemable? Don't believe him. <laughs> and then he goes on. He says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Therefore, you unfaithful king. Therefore, you sinful king. Therefore, you broken king. This promise is not given to a David, not given to an Abraham. It's given to an Ahaz. Therefore, Ahaz, he says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which in Hebrew means God with us. What is the most powerful word? I think it's the word with. You see, the most powerful moments of your life are with moments. You know, when she walked down that aisle, stood with you, took your hand and said, I will be with you for better, for worse. Or when you leaned over that hospital bed where she laid and the doctor put that infant in your hands and said, this is your son, this is your daughter. Or that moment when you were struck with illness and your friend or your family or your small group came to be with you at your bedside. Friends, the most powerful expression of love you've ever experienced always comes in the context of with. And this is the promise that God makes to the king Ahaz, this evil king. He says, I'm not making a promise to a righteous and faithful king. The promise I'm making is to a broken, sinful, adulterous, idolatrous person. God says, I'll be Emmanuel. I'll be with you in spite of you.
Friends, this is good news because you and I, we're not righteous. We're not faithful either. We are King Ahaz. We're the one who does evil in this story. And God says to us, even though we're broken, even though we're messed up, he says, I'll be with you. I'll be Emmanuel, God with you. Here's a spiritual fact for you. Write this down. God's promises are not derailed by our sin. They're activated by our failures. God is the God of with you say, Ray, isn't this promise to Ahaz just like a promise just to him? I mean, how could it be a promise to me? It happened so long ago. It was said only to this king. Well, friends, fast forward to the era of Jesus' birth. When we read Matthew's genealogy of Jesus, he lists Ahaz in his lineage. Matthew 1.9 says, Uzzah was the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. And after this lineage, that promise shows up again. This is Matthew 1.23. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him what? Emmanuel, Hebrew, for God with us. Now, let me teach you something very important about prophecy. With very important prophecies, there's often both a close application and a distant application. The theological term for this is dual prophetic perspective or dual fulfillment. It means that there was fulfillment in the prophecy for King Ahaz in his era and there is fulfillment in the prophecy many hundreds of years later when Jesus was born. You say, well, how was this prophecy fulfilled for Ahaz? Well, his son was a foreshadow of Jesus, just like David was a foreshadow of Jesus. Who was the son of King Ahaz? Well, we read it in verse 9. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, King Ahaz's son, was King Hezekiah, the most righteous king that Israel had ever had. And Hezekiah is a great king, in spite of the fact that his father was an evil king. See, this promise of with that God makes, it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter who your dad is. It doesn't matter who your mom is. It matters who your God is. See, King Hezekiah shows us that in just one generation, even if you're from the worst of backgrounds, that beautiful things can happen if God is with you. Now, what does it mean that God is with us? You know, we sing it in Christmas carols. We talk about Emmanuel a lot at Christmas, but let me just strip away the holiday commercialization of it. And let me show you three ways that God is with us. Three ways that will impact your life right now. The very first of which is in Joshua 23, 14. It reads, you know with all your heart and your soul that not one of the good promises the Lord your God has given you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. The psalmist writes, the Lord is trustworthy in all he promises. Friends, here's the first thing you got to know. God fulfills his promises. You know, I think of my boys when I think of promises. You ever notice that kids, like from, you know, second grade on to like eighth grade, they've got very selective memories. Have you noticed this? One time I'm packing the SUV with gear for our ski trip to Michigan, and I had all the boys try on all the gear the night before. I had them put their socks and gloves and hats in a special bag with their name on it. And then on the day of the trip, we load up the SUV. And I told my boys over and over and over, be sure your bag gets in the SUV. Be sure, because you don't want to be hundreds of miles from home with no socks, gloves, or hats. Oh, I promise, Dad, I won't forget. When we get to the ski resort, we unpack. What happens? <laughs> Some kid's bag did not make the trip. Some kid forgot his promise. Now, contrast that to my promise, right? I barely whispered to a kid that this weekend we might go to DeBrand's or we might go see a movie. Like, I didn't quite commit to it. I just said I'm thinking about it. And friends, now that promise is entered into kid law. Like, the kid is like a court reporter, like he remembers every detail, right? Like if Friday comes and I don't give signals that we're going to the movies, they're going to be like, Dad, let's pull up the record. Dad, at 6.32 p.m. on Monday evening, we have you on the record promising a very expensive chocolate and Spider-Man. And if you don't fulfill such promise, you shall be a hypocrite, Dad, right? Have you had this happen? Like you have if you're a parent. See, I think, I think we do this to each other. And we do it so much that we think that's the way that God is. That God, you know, he remembers some promises and he forgets about others. But here's the thing about Emmanuel. He always fulfills his promises. God does not come to Ahaz and say, well, you know, I did make this promise to the house of David, but then I saw the evil you did and well, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you don't deserve it. You put an idol in my temple and that's that. We're done. Now I'm canceling the promise, right? No, God shows up and says, because you're a sinner. I must fulfill this promise because you're broken. I must come through because you're doing evil. I must show you love and acceptance and forgiveness because you don't understand how much I am for you. I must be a God of my promises and be with you. See that prayer you prayed five, 10 years ago, the one you forgot about it? God has not forgotten. 
He's still working. He's not forgot that frantic 2 a.m. desperate prayer about your son or your daughter or your job or your marriage. His kingdom, it's still coming. And his will is still being done. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, No matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Christ. So if God keeps his promises, what should you and I do? Would you write this down? It's the second thing you got to know. Two words. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Listen, God is not that family member or that friend who lets you down. He is not that spouse or that child or that parent that broke their word or their promise to you. See, see, we get let down over and over by people and we get jaded, right? We think promises don't mean anything anymore, but they do to God. Friends, God can be trusted. Set your expectations at 100%. He's going to come through for you. He is for you and he's with you. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what King Ahaz's uh, emotional response was at this moment, but I think it had to be a lack of trust. You see, Emmanuel means God remains with us, even when we doubt that that's true, even when we feel lonely and isolated. I think that's why in verse 11, Ahaz says, I'm not going to ask God. He thought that when Isaiah, God's messenger, came knocking at his door, that God had sent him to punish him because he knew. He deserved punishment. He knew he had done awful things and he was about to do worse. And given the evil that Ahaz had done, I'm sure Isaiah wished that he was a messenger of God's wrath. But Isaiah gives him God's message. Verse 10, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether it's in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. Isaiah is saying, look, if you doubt God, then ask him to prove his love. He will prove it. In fact, you, King Ahaz, are going to be a part of the most important promise ever made to mankind. But you know, Ahaz, he couldn't see it. He couldn't trust God. He couldn't believe that God loved him despite his evil. And, and I think we're all a bit like that. So what do you do? What should Ahaz have done? Well, write this down. When you're in this spot, come back to God. You know, many, many times, especially at Christmas, we think, well, I'm going to invite someone to Christmas Eve services this Thursday, this Friday. I'm going to send them a, an email. I'm going to send them a, a, a request on Messenger. But, but I, we're never quite sure that they're going to come because we think, oh, man, they're just so far away from God. But we forget we're just one part of God's work in their life. We forget God's been doing in their life what God did in Ahaz's life. He's been showing up and loving on them no matter what they've done. And friends, our part is to remain faithful, to invite them knowing God has a plan for their heart, for their life. See, every week, yeah, I talk to people as the services conclude and many tell me, you know, Ray, I'm not a Christian, but I used to go to a youth group. I had this fantastic experience. Or they say, you know, Ray, I'm not a Christian, but I had a coach that was, and he was amazing. Or, Ray, I'm not a Christian, but when my dad got sick, I cried out to God, and, and I don't know, I just felt something happened. I felt it. Or they say, Ray, I used to go to church. I, I used to be close to God, but I got distracted. I got off the path. Something happened to me, and I got disappointed in God. And, and I know that wasn't the right response, but now I'm here. Friends, this Christmas... You're not a part of some tree lighting ceremony or shopping spree. You're a part of thousands of years of promises from God and his heart to interact with people to fulfill every single one. You're a part of something sovereign, something beautiful, something divine of God fulfilling his promise in millions of ways. Every time you're kind when a cashier is overloaded, every time you're gracious when you could complain, every time you do something nice, buying a cup of coffee or complimenting somebody, you indicate to the people around you that you want them to know the love, the acceptance, the forgiveness of Jesus that you have experienced, that you want them to be with who you are with. It's the extension of that most powerful word, with, with. You want people to experience what you have, God with. That even when they sin, that even when they believe they disappointed God, that he has not given up on them. That truly it is their sin that compels God to be Emmanuel, God with us. See, the with, it never started at the cross. It didn't start at Jesus' trial. It didn't start at the scourging. No, the price Jesus paid for my sin and yours began with his first cry in the crib. When he filled his lungs with our dirty, dusty air, when he came into the world vulnerable as an infant, as if to say, I will risk everything to be with you. It's the most powerful word in the universe, with. No matter who you are, what you've done, who you've done it with, how long you've done it for, there is a God. His name is Emmanuel, and it says everything about his heart. He wants to be with you. Hey, can I pray for you? Jesus, there are people watching 
here at every age and every stage of their life. For those who have been around for a while, I pray that this Christmas would be the most poignant in feeling your presence of living in your promise of with. And Lord, I pray for those who are on the journey towards you that right now, I know that you're with them, but I pray that they take a step to be with you. And friends, if you're watching right now and you haven't fully given your life to Jesus, I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm not asking you to join a religion. I'm asking you to be with God in the way that he wants to be with you. And you can do that right where you are right now. Would you just say, God, come into my life. Forgive me for my sin. Take charge of my life. Be with me. Would you pray that? Say, God, forgive me. Be with me. Right now, just say, God, forgive me. Be with me. Lead me. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer with me, I believe you made the most important decision any human being could ever make. And I want to pray a blessing over your life. So if that was you, would you right now just put hashtag Jesus in the feed right now, just so that I know to pray specifically for you. Just put hashtag Jesus in the feed right now. Go ahead. Hashtag Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now for every decision that's made. I pray that you have shown the full extent of with them in their lives. Help them to grow in your truth and to build a life around your promises. Bless them. And Lord, not just for those that put hashtag Jesus in the feed and started a relationship with you. But God, I pray for all of us. Let us live out the promise of with, the promise of Emmanuel. In every conversation we have, in every activity we do, in this busy season, we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Hey, friends, it is Christmas time. And we are in the midst of it, the march down to Christmas Eve. And it's coming this Friday. I'm so excited to be able to share it with you. Hey, I hope you're watching. And if you live here locally in Fort Wayne, I hope you get a chance to come and experience Fort Wayne right here at the Point Church on, on Thursday, December 23rd, Christmas Eve Eve, or on Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. If you can't watch in person, we would love for you to watch online. You can see us on Wayne TV at 7.30 p.m. as we broadcast Christmas for the Fort for our old city. Or you can catch us right where you're catching us right now. Hey, thanks for being with us. Here's Deanna with the details. Welcome back. Thank you, Ray, for that message. What a great message. And you know, uh, now's the time in the service where if you call the Point Church your home, we, we say, hey, you know, give because we're called to give with a cheerful heart. And, and if you want, just point at the, the pointchurch.net slash give or there's the text to give which there'll be the number right down here at the bottom and in fact that's the way I give I, I text it's so easy my wife's always like on Friday hey don't forget to give and so I'll get on our text and sometimes I'll time myself it takes 10 seconds once this thing's set up it's 10, 10, 10 seconds sometimes it's been five it's boom yes boom done email done I always say finished always feels good to give so and you know we're doing a thing called finish strong so if this is the point church is your home uh, if you can give above and beyond what you normally give to finish strong we can get prepared for 2022 we know that 2021 was a stinker of a year we just want to get ready for 2022 and see what god's going to do here in this church and through this church so give strong finish strong and uh i think that's about it so you have yourself a great time thank you so much for checking us out we'll see you on christmas eve service talk to you later